In this repair video, we're going to be working on this device here. Looks like a watch, right? Open it, and we have a note inside. We also have a note on the ticket, and it looks like the device is a flash drive. I hate when customers include notes, notes, and notes, and notes, and notes. Why do we need a sticky note if you already have notes on the ticket? Half of the times, I do not read any notes that come with the device. I only look at the ticket and the description. My flash drive has stopped working. When I recently plugged it into my computer and went to open a document, my computer froze. I closed the document, removed the flash drive, and when I replugged it, it kept spinning. Since then, I'm sometimes able to get the flash drive window to open. I can see my documents, but the window will not stay open long enough for me to open any of them. When I attempt to open one, it says it's not recognized. So the flash drive is freezing and the customer is not able to read any of his documents, even though sometimes he does see the documents, he tried to open or click on one and it does not open. It gives him the message, the drive is not recognized. Let me remove that piece of diamond from this Rolex box. And the drive is a sand disk. We do hear the tone. And let's see if we're going to get any window to open. Nothing. Now it's trying to read. You can tell by that green bar on top. Drive not recognized. Okay, so I tried to read from the drive and then it gave the error, drive not recognized. I was not able to see any files. Now the first thing we're going to do is open up the shell. And I know from experience opening up this shell is not easy. We're going to have to break it to get to the inside unless there's an easier way that I'm missing. The seam on the drive is, it's almost seamless. You do not see any seam, but it's there. Right now we care about the files and we do not care about the drive, so even if we break the shell, that's part of accessing the motherboard inside. You see, you can tell we have a seam, but it's super fine. Right now I'm under the microscope and you can barely see one. And even with a razor blade, it's very difficult to cut. For this one, I think I'm going to use the cutter on my grinding pen. The grinding pen does come with a cutter. It's like a disc. And just remember, this tool is not a Dremel. It's not going to cut through rocks. It's not going to cut through granite. It's meant for microscopic components. Or if we want to cut a pin off, or if we want to cut a connector off. The plastic on this drive is hard. It's not soft plastic. All right, so the core is out. Let's call it the core. I mean, if you look here, the whole drive is inside the socket. Not much going on. Let me show it to you under the microscope. So we had to tear the whole drive in pieces to get to that piece, to that part here. Now we're going to have to open the socket. Right, and I just took apart the housing, the socket. 
and right there. That's what we are looking for. This whole struggle is for this chip. Flip it backwards. And that's what we have. The board is made out of a couple of components. It looks like we have a resistor right here, one here, one here, and this looks like a cap. That's it. There's nothing that we can do with this drive except for looking into those components and looking into the soldering of the socket. The socket looks like it's soldered on nicely. Just a quick measurement. We'll measure in diode mode. And maybe we can go over this super tiny cap. And we do not have a short here. We're going to assume it's good. Right now, not much that we can do. We only have a few components on the board. I tested those components, and they are testing good. This one is testing continuous, continuous. The cap is not testing for a short, and this one is testing good in diet mode. So what I'm going to do is probably remove this USB socket, the blue one that you see on top, the USB 3.0 socket, and maybe we can solder a USB 2.0 socket to VCC ground D minus D plus. We can use this one here, and then, or we can use a better one. I have a bucket full of sockets. We can probably use this one here. We have ground here, and we have five volts here. Meter in diode mode. If I place my red probe right here, that's ground, because we hear a beep. If we flip the probes in diode mode, then we get a reading of 2.5 volts. And here we get a beep, which is good. So ground is this guy right here, and that's positive right here. So we're going to have to connect our socket, our 2.0 socket, like this. Exactly like this. Right now, I do not have a reason to believe that we have any disconnected pins under this blue socket here. And the reason is, if I point my red probe on ground and positive, we go here, we see that we have a connection. We hear the beep. If there was no connection on this pad, then we would get an OL. We would not get any reading, but I am getting a reading. I'm getting a reading here, and I'm getting a reading here. Right now, I do not care about the rest of the pins. Those are USB 3.0. We care about 2.0 to recover data. And to be honest, we're going to remove this socket and solder our own socket, but I do not have much hope. We're going to do it just for the sake of doing it, because there's not much that we can do right now. But I want to give this my best before we email the customer and let them know what's going on. So let's do it. Maybe we got lucky. Who knows? Now there's a very good chance that we're going to end up burning that blue connector, but right now we do not care. Because we can always solder an external connector. And that's what happens when you work with data recovery. You have to get down to the bones and see what's going on. You cannot just look at it externally and guess. That blue USB socket is out. And now we're going to focus on the pads down on the bottom. Those are the USB 2.0 pads. And those are the USB 3.0 pads right here. Let's put this on the side. I need to prep this connector because I used it for a previous repair and we only have two wires connected to that connector. So we need to add one more wire here and one more here. And we're going to use our nf.mini pen, the knife tip. Right. And let's cut that wire right over here. And we need one more.
and let's get rid of the glare. I'm gonna have to grab each wire individually. Just like that. We're all good. And we're going to call it quits if we're not able to recover fast. That will mean that the problem is internal to that chip and we cannot go inside and see what's going on. I want to check from here to here. Good. Yeah, I mean, the wires are making a good connection. Okay, the chip is super hot. Let me just grab my thermal camera quick because I noticed the chip is getting super hot when plugged in, which is a very good indication that the problem is internal to the chip. And look at this, not recognized and we do see heat on the chip. Not where we have the wires soldered, but on the top. We have heat right in the middle. And if we flip the chip, we do see heat right over here. So it's something internal to the chip and we're not gonna be able to work on it. And that's it. We're going to deem it a no fix. We'll let the customer know and ship it back to him. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.